for almost 10 years, we've watched life coach Yanla Van Zant empower and change lives on her Emmy award-winning series, Yanla Fix My Life. In May, the legend said goodbye to her hit show and hello to a new chapter. And I'm so excited to have her back on our show, one of our TAM fan favorites, the inspirational Ayala Van Zandt. Welcome to the show. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we just love you so much. And I have so many questions. Listen, walking away from the show, you've talked about how you knew it was time to leave, that you felt it. But but really, how nervous were you when you had to make it official to people like Oprah and your staff? How did that feel? I wasn't nervous because one of the things that I've learned is when I get an intuitive hit or guidance to do something, I sit with it until it's solid in me. Mm. Because if it's not solid in me, once I present it to everybody else, what I'm going to get from them are my doubts, my fears, my my hesitations, because people are going to reflect back to you what you're holding inside. So once I got it, this is done. I just sat with it mm. and went through, you know, in my own brain. OK, what's going to happen? What about the people's jobs? What about your manager? How are you going to feed the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> you had to go through that. So by the time I spoke it. I was solid. It's interesting you said sit with it. Our other guests said the same thing. A lot of times when you're searching for your confidence or searching for an answer, people get afraid of silence. Yes. I am teaching a class right now called God Works Through Silence mm. and really helping us understand that when you can get silent and still, you get the deepest wisdom and divine mm -hmm. guidance that's available to you. And it'll be in perfect alignment with what's right for you. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we don't make really life-altering, life-changing decisions is because we're worried about it's how it's going to affect other people. Right. But if you can get solid with how it's going to affect you and then take a stand for that. Right. One of the reasons I was able to say fix my life is done is because each year I work on something. Mm. I work on love. I work on joy. I work on peace. I work on service. Well, my, my principle was freedom. I wanted freedom, wow. freedom to be, to do, to go. And you know, doing a show, you don't have no freedom. <laughs> so I took a stand for what I value. Well, well this is why this shocks me, Yanla. You talked about the freedom. I was stunned, the team was stunned when we heard that part of that freedom you desired um, was being free of criticism and being scrutinized and that people watching the show would scrutinize things like your hair and your nails and you'd just grown tired of folks being what you said was mean and nasty. Yeah. I, I'm very sensitive to energy and so... You know, and because you go into people's homes, you're in the bathroom, you're in the kitchen, you're in the lift, they think they know you and they think they have a right to say certain things because we're not clear and conscious of the energy we send out. So through the emails, through the social media, people were coming to my home. I was getting death threats because they didn't like something I said or did. And I'm like, I want to be free of this. I don't want this. You were getting death threats? Yeah, I got death threats around certain shows, around certain issues, around things that I said. <sighs> um, people come to my home, you know, because with the Internet, they can find you anywhere. And, you know, they would come to my home. They would call me. I know you don't know me, but I need help. Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> and I have so many vehicles and avenues where I serve people. Right. I'm, I'm on social media. I have classes. I teach. You don't get to call me on my private phone at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And so I just wanted to be free of that. You wanted to be free. That was more important to me. Yana, I know in 2003, you lost your daughter, Jamia, um, to colon cancer. And you've said of that moment, that it didn't impact your confidence, but it did make you feel like a fraud. Help me understand that feeling. What, what was that? Well, you know, I'm flying all over the world, helping people. I'm, I'm supporting people in their growth. And then as mommy, 
my pup was sick and there was nothing I could do. Wow. You know, cancer is a formidable challenger. So I'm like, how can I help people save their lives and fix their relationships? And my child is sick and there's absolutely nothing I can do but stand here. So I was walking around feeling like, you know, of course it was the ego just making me crazy, but I was walking around feeling like if I can't help my own, how can I help other people? And um, it was really a challenging time. It was really a challenging experience. But after she made her transition, uh, she passed on Christmas Day. And I'll never forget, um, she was at her home, 31 years old, in her home that she owned, you know, uh, because that's how she lived. She just lived like that. And I remember when they brought her body downstairs, I said to the to the undertaker, I said, I want to close the body bag because she doesn't like the dark. And it came to me, I said, wow, God must really think that I'm a strong person to give me the privilege of bringing her into life and the privilege of supporting her as she moves to the other life. So I closed that body bag and I, I told her it's going to be okay because I knew she didn't like the dark. And so just doing that, I was like, okay, there's something else going on here. <laughs> you know, let me tap into that yeah. and not get caught up in, you know, the minute things of life. Oh my gosh, you are such an incredible person <laughs> and that you could find, oh my goodness, the words and the peace in that moment um, is why people have fallen in love with you. And I'm so happy that you close a chapter on the book and open the chapter into still talking to people with the R spot. So you're not gone. You might be gone from that particular show, but you're not gone from our lives. I'm, I'm doing what I really love, what gives me freedom. I don't have to have producer meetings. I don't have to worry about lighting. <laughs> Crying on TV because you're on a podcast. If I want you know. to. And I'm teaching online. And one yeah. of the things that I became very aware of is how the pandemic impacted people's relationships and how nowhere in our life, not elementary school, church, college, do people give us the skills and the tools to make our relationships better. Yeah. We, we, we hear about what to do, but what are the everyday practical skills and tools? Yeah. So the R spot is going to be my, my podcast, like the G spot. I want to get into <laughs> those places that make relationships better. <laughs> well, I love it. Congratulations on it all. We love you, Iyanla. The R Spot podcast with Shonda Land and iHeartMedia is set for release. And thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you.